It's not like I'm going to the driving range and I just start whacking golf balls. I know a lot of you guys out there expect that when I'm out here, just getting here, and people ask me like, hey, can you hit one for me? No, God, please, no, no! I mean, yeah, just, it just takes 20 minutes till I get there. So this is my warm-up routine and how I ramp up for speed to hit the ball 400 yards plus. The first thing I do is I grab a 60 degree and actually what I start off with is super boring. I just try to hit a couple chips without taking a divot. So there's not a lot of wrist action going on. It's a very traditional type of chip slash pitch. And then I'm obviously getting fancy because I mean, it's, it's not that much fun to just chip balls down there. So what I do is actually I try to hit some balls right at this flag. Right flag, right flag, we go a little lower. So now I actually want to take a bit of a divot and run. And it doesn't run. And then I'm kind of, it's almost like I'm practicing a little bit of short game. And now zip. Interesting how these, these range balls actually, I mean, they don't spin that much, obviously, but at least they spin a little more when you hit them correctly. And zip. So you see what I'm doing there, right? I'm just trying to hit a couple different shots just to, to warm up the wrist properly. And then I ramp it up. I go a little, little longer. I go like a three quarter swing, but still I'm trying to avoid a big divot. So it's more like that. So for me down there, this is not a big divot, right? It's just, I almost clipped it off the, off the grass and I slowly, try to get longer and longer and longer. And this sometimes, working on playing around with the wedges, takes like 10 minutes. And then I go glove on and I switch to some type of mid iron. It really doesn't matter because I only hit one iron. Sometimes I switch it back and forth a little bit with it. Right now, to me, it's a six iron because this one has my jumbo max grip on it so i get used to the grip already i got to completely redo all my irons at some point so then i go six iron normal shot and just take half swings first again almost no divot no divot because you know when i'm flushing it i don't take divots when i'm flushing it i don't take divots <laughs> right okay again half swing Almost no divot, beautiful. So just trying to make sure I'm preparing and priming my body to handle the big load eventually. That's what she said. <laughs> that I'm gonna put on it with drivers and going fast. That was a little more divot. So then what I try to do right now already is I try to prime a certain shot shape. So my natural shot shape is a draw and I tend to overhook it. So what I try to do now is I try to hit cuts. Every single shot for the next five balls is supposed to be cutting. So what I do is I set up a little open, I set up the face towards the target and now all I think is steep takeaway and fade through the ball. Open up those shoulders. And that's a beautiful fade right there. So that's what I try to do with my body. I try to warm it up and then I try to prime it for a certain shot. So the last bit before I actually switch to drivers is I try to use the same swing thought that I wanna to apply to drivers with a six iron. So I try to be patient at the top and then hit a high cut. That's my current swing thought. So that's what I try to do, just emulate it. Open stands towards target, patient at the top, and high cut. Beautiful. Okay, and now's the time. Switch to the big stick. I just hit a couple play drivers. So let's tee up over here. And really, as of right now, my the speed that I put on this golf shaft and golf club for now really doesn't matter that much to me. I just wanna get a feel for the curvature that I hit. So I just try to cut these again. 
For example, that thing is just a straight shot, which is great, which is fine, but it's not fine if you're trying to cut the golf ball. I tee up a little lower with a play driver, obviously, so the ball flight is a little lower too, and just trying to make sure to really cut this last golf ball. Nice. Okay, only cut so far. That was a very good warm up. It doesn't always go that way. Sometimes I have to work way harder to actually hit the cut. Today was more of a natural cut. It just happened so we can switch to the 21 high. And then we start off with the first swing. It's always a bit of a guessing game. Today, I don't know how I feel like because you cannot feel speed. It's so weird. You, you just cannot feel it. It's absolutely impossible. Sometimes I feel super fast and it shows a fairly slow number and sometimes I feel like terrible, not recovered whatsoever and I show my biggest speed so it's always a bit of a mystery. So today on the first shot I would say anything over 150 club at speed is a pretty decent number. So let's see what we're getting. 152. That's actually pretty good. So and then I work my way into it and try to just ramp up the speed step by step and right now I'm in a spot of my preparation that I try to ramp it up way sooner than during the off season. During the off season I try to ramp it up by ball like 50, 50-ish. Now I try to ramp it up by ball 10. So by ball 10 I want to be 158. I really got to work the body into it because otherwise I I couldn't do this for a long time. <laughs> I mean, I, I see Eddie Fernandez out there doing this at the age of, how old is he? 53, 52, 50, old. He's old. He's basically winning everything in the seniors division and he could easily still compete in the open division and do very well. So longevity is a super important topic also in the game golf and you might know, but I wanna remind you I got something special for you right here. I started my professional long drive career in 2017. In the meanwhile, I'm getting close to 1 million long drive swings on my body, which you can imagine is very taxing, but I truly believe we can get up to 10 million swings. And the key topic to get there is longevity. And I'm super grateful I found a partner that supplements my lifestyle and supports my journey to keep up this insane pace. And that partner is Avea Life. They are from Switzerland and I've been testing their products for over six months now. My main differentiator is all their products, every single one is science backed, no blah blah. And today's feature product is the Collagen Activator. It has four main ingredients that are great for bones, skin, muscles, and my personal favorite, joints. I use it every day after dinner, and I would recommend you to do the same. With their different subscription models, Avea offers a great value for their high quality products, and with my code, Martin, you get an additional 15% off. I can utilize one more power source, and what I try to do then is like, I try to just activate power source after power source, so this is just normal golf swing. So, the next one that I would use is basically trying to be more patient at the top and really try to hit P4 and a quarter so that early stage of the downswing really hard. So let's see what that does when I hit that point of the swing really hard. 153, so that gave me a mile an hour. On the next one, we actually gotta make a little jump here. And I mean that literally. P4 and a quarter, it's gotta be hard. And now I wanna go down up down up so I want to my feel to activate better timing and more vertical force is actually by swinging up and trying to go down up as quickly and early as I can so that's what I try to do now 154 so that's another mile an hour 156 so it's slowly slowly climbing Every single swing is roughly a mile an hour. Now we, we skip one, but that's how, how I try to work it up. And now, I mean, we could go fairly crazy now on the next one, 
and already lift that left foot off the ground. That's pretty much one of the last elements. What that does, it's creating more range of motion because it's opening up a little bit of the pelvis turn. That allows me to rotate my thorax more. That's creating a longer hand pass and that should automatically already create more speed. And then obviously because I, I go up with my foot, it's also gonna elevate the body a bit more to allow more drop into the ground and transition and more force output on the vertical. So let's try to do that. See, 157, it's another mile an hour. And now we gotta combine those mechanics elements of like adding gear after gear after gear with like just going harder at it. And that like early transition to me is the most important point at, of going hard. So, okay, here we go. Left foot off the ground. Hard transition, hope for a 158 by ball 10. Two more, come on. Ooh. 157, one mile an hour left. It's not like going crazy after it because I'm, my body is not completely ready yet, but a 158 is already a good basis to hit really big balls. Okay, let's go. Ah. Bad strike, 156, getting slower. So that was out of sync. So that was not good. So I did not achieve my goal here of being at 158 by ball 10. So we got to do it on ball 11. So that was interesting because that was kind of rushed. So everything, you, can, you barely can't see that on camera because all the swings kind of look the same, but I feel it. When something's out of sync, like then all the elements don't work well together. And then you're actually getting slower because something's off. So now we gotta time it up correctly. Let's sync it up. I didn't see the ball, but it was at 157. So we're climbing back up. That's a better ball, 158. Here we go. So 158, I got the number. Angle of attack went a little bit down, 8.6. Still fine, 1.9 into out. That's great. So this would be my basis to now play through sets. Sets of six balls, I try to replicate an actual set and emulate playing and trying to hit the grid. I got a grid back there, which is 40 yards wide. So that helps me to prepare for the tightest grids possible. And well, you never know, you might face a 32 yard grid, right? <laughs> or it might play a little more narrow, but this is a really good way of practicing and really going through those different states of mind during a set and during a competition. Because when you miss the first four, well, you can't afford to freak out. You gotta stay conscious and hit the next two in the grid and strike them perfectly. So that's what I try to achieve all the time. And that's why it doesn't make sense to just make me hit one. Because it's probably not gonna be the best ball and potentially it can hurt my body. And for you guys out there, I wouldn't recommend you to, well, start your driving session, like driving range session with a driver. I know it's called driving range, but that doesn't mean you have to only hit drivers. I've seen people start off with driver and with driver, nothing in between and then go play. I mean, that's a really risky thing to do. So I wouldn't recommend that. Go through the warm up, make sure we can do this for a long time. Make sure you use Avea at the same time and you're absolutely prepared to make it up to 93 years old just like Alphonse did. Go check this guy out. This is ridiculous. He's 93 years old and he's still playing multiple times every week. What an amazing athlete and really good looking at the same time. Right Alphonse? Yeah, that's beautiful. Make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and check out all the other videos that I have on my channel. There's so many different things and there's so much to come. We have live streams in the making throughout the winter and a bunch of different content pieces, out on course, training, whatever it might be. Comment down below what you wanna see because there's so much inspiration out there and I can't even decide what to do first. So please comment down below what you wanna see and I appreciate every single like of the video.